It seems like Tyler Eifert might be the poster child for the guy that you say, man, if they could just stay healthy, they could be so good. You know, he ha definitely has at times looked really good. I mean, without a doubt. In 2015, most notably, he had 13 touchdowns and was selected to a Pro Bowl. So he's definitely had his moments. However, he's also a player that hasn't had over 500 snaps since 2015. And his career high in snaps is 821, which was in 2015. So, you know, he's definitely struggled just to get a lot of playing time. Uh, but at the same time, when he plays, he does play well. I mean, we can all remember his spectacular performance in the Tank Bowl uh, last year when he, he really came through in the clutch. He's had some great moments. And so the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to say, you know what? Let's go out and get him. We'll roll the dice because we're not that great last year. We They weren't that great last year. So Jacksonville has decided to take a chance. They're going to sign him to a two-year, $9.5 million deal. And there's a potential out after the first year where they would just have $1.125 million in dead cap. So definitely a, a pretty low-risk, high-reward type move, I think. I, I think that he can be very effective and can play very well. Again, it's a little bit surprising nobody offered him more, but I like this move from Jacksonville's perspective because either, you know, the injury's caught up with him and he sucks or just he can't stay healthy and then you don't lose anything because you're not going to the Super Bowl this year, so who cares? Or he plays what he can play and now all of a sudden you have a great player on a reasonable contract. So it makes sense either way. And let's just, let's just get into what Tyler Eifert does well. We'll start things off with this one. This is going to be a cover three zone, and that's going to be Eifert's route. So this is the route you'll see relatively frequently against this type of coverage. It's a good route against this type of coverage because, you know, especially since Cincinnati is going to be running play action and LA is going to bite into play action pretty hard, actually, uh, it's going to get open. But if you look at Eifert right when this ball is snapped, notice how he does a great job of not giving away what he's doing. If he starts to cut towards the middle... The cornerback will say, okay, I know it's happening. I have to run in and try to knock this ball away. But Eifert does a good job of just waiting, not going too quickly, and taking his time, being patient before cutting in. So when he does cut in, he's able to get open. He makes the catch. They get the ball, and they get the first down. Uh, that's kind of what he can do. He's a good route runner. More often than not, he gets somewhat open. It's rare that he's going to get wide open, but he is the kind of guy where it's like, I feel like he's a good third down guy. Because he's almost always going to at least be kind of open on third down. And if you trust your quarterback, then he can get open relatively consistently. What I mean by that is a play like this, where it's going to be a cover one hole, and that's going to be his route. So, you know, depending on what the Rams player who's in charge of covering the middle of the field does, he could or couldn't get open. But it's something that Andy Dalton is going to look to throw the ball to. And after the ball is snapped, you notice the Eifert, he's running his route. He's a little bit open, but at the same time... What's key here is that that LA player who's in charge of covering the middle of the field is going to be covering the, the opposite sideline from where Tyler Eifert is at. So this way, when Eifert cuts towards the middle of the field, he can get somewhat open. And as you see, he gets open just enough that Andy Dalton is able to make that throw and they do pick up the first down. Eifert wasn't wide open. You know, it wasn't like an unbelievable route that he made, but that's kind of what he does. He's just a big guy who's fast enough that... He's going to at least have some semblance of a window pretty much no matter what. And as long as your quarterback can just make a good throw, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be good. But if he can, then that can result in first downs, that can result in touchdowns. And so it seems like that's just what is going to be the case for Jacksonville is can Minshew be able to make those those relatively tough throws, not even impossible throws, just relatively tough ones. He also understands his assignments on many of these plays. This one's a good example of that, where it's going to be a cover two zone. That's going to be Eifert's route. It's going to get into a gap right there, as you see. It's basically before all the zones in the middle, middle of the field. And also worth noting, this is the third down and two right here. So just picking up a few yards is huge on this play. And so watch how, first things first, he has to run quickly to get to his spot. Speed is very important right here, because as you see... If he starts to cut back, if he starts to cut in any direction, an L.A. player is going to realize that that's what he's doing, run in and try to make a play, and he can't let that happen because there isn't a ton of separation. So he has to make it seem as though he could be running deep, and he has to run as quickly as he can. 
But now, at this point, when he is supposed to cut back and try to make a play, he's going to have to cut back in an instant and be able to make this catch. He can't turn around and then, you know, look and see what's going on, then try to make the play. He's going to have to, in one instant, turn back and hope the ball is coming to him and then catch the ball. It is not an easy thing to pull off, but watch how he is able to pull that off. Turns around quickly, makes the catch, and gets the first down. It's just a good play by him. It's just, you know... It's not easy to, for one thing, have the speed to get to that spot as quickly as he did. But for the other thing, to be able to have the footwork and have the awareness to turn around and see the ball coming and make the catch and even fall backwards to gain even more yards. Just a really good play from Eifert, I thought. Okay, well, I talked about his great performance in the Tank Bowl. Might as well show a play from it. I mean, we all know he caught the Hail Mary that tied it. Well, maybe we don't all know. I'm not sure how many people actually watched that game because it was a Week 16 game with the dolphins Bengals. But if you haven't, check it out. That was a qu crazy game. However, anyways, uh, the way this play is going to work, this is a two-point conversion that brought them within eight. Uh, that's where Eifert is, and he's going to be running just a quick route over the middle. Nothing too fancy. But notice how he does a good job of running this route in a way where he doesn't give away that he's running to the inside until right before he cuts. Pretty good well-ran route, and that's going to get him some separation. He's obviously a big guy, so he's in front of his assigned man, and he's uh, got a little bit of a little bit of a head start in getting to the middle of the field. So Andy Dalton says, hey, I can try to make this throw. It's not going to be a wide open window, but it can maybe be something you know, there is a window there, not a giant window, but there is a window, and he makes a very good throw. They get the touchdown, or the two-point conversion right there, and again, not like this crazy wide-open window, but that's a lot of what Eifert does, is he just consistently gets you a window that you can throw the ball to. It's very rare that he will get you some wide open situation every now and then he will but for the most part he's just going to get relatively open consistently that's kind of what he does and also as you've noticed I'm showing a lot of him just receiving plays as we all know he is not a receiver he's a tight end but uh, at the same time I think him being a good receiving tight end is really where he shines not to say that he's an atrocious blocker or any means but that's definitely not where he makes his money he makes his money in the receiving game, and he does a very good job at it. I'll show one more play because, you know, it's not just him getting open. Sometimes it's him making tough catches, and this play is an example of it where it's going to be a rub route where they're going to do that. You know, the player who's lined up with Eifert, they're going to have a receiver run around and, and block him, and Eifert, who finishes his route right over there, could get open. That's the way this is going to hopefully work for Cincinnati, and as you see right when the ball is snapped, it works out okay one thing that Baltimore does a pretty good job of is they fight through the pick pretty well so there's not a ton of separation but because of the the rub route or pick whatever you want to call it this now means that the Baltimore receiver who's in charge or the Baltimore defensive back who's in charge of covering Eifert had to turn his back to make sure he can keep up with Eifert and so because of this Eifert can see the ball and adjust to it whereas his assigned man can't so watch how Eifert takes advantage of that by being able to leap up, make a catch, and stay in bounds to get the touchdown. Just a really good play from Eifert. I mean, a good play design, a good, well-executed play by the entire Cincinnati Bengals team, not just Eifert on that one, but Eifert definitely obviously made the, the best play. He was the one who made the jumping catch in the end zone for a touchdown. Typically, when you do that, you're going to get some credit, and that's exactly what, what he deserves is some credit for a play like that. He's a good red zone threat. He's really good in those like third down situations. He's someone that can consistently get open. And for Jacksonville, I think that he can be another good asset for them. It seems like they have a lot of guys who are now pretty good possession guys. Uh, maybe they can still use that number one receiver, but they're looking pretty good. I like what Jacksonville is doing. I don't think they're there yet. I don't think they're going to be a playoff team in 2020, but I think they're making the right moves to be a good team sooner rather than later. This offseason, I think they've done a pretty good job considering the fact that they were maybe in the worst situation heading into this offseason, and they've done a lot of good, I think, and they've really made the most of their not-great situation. So that's just my opinion. I like the signing. It's it's low-risk, high-reward. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.